Hey, good afternoon, everybody. This is Jonathan. Looking forward to a, a great conversation with my good friend, Brian, talking all things robotics and automation. Brian, happy new year. Uh, hopefully new year is off to a great start. Yeah, happy new year. It's, well, bit, let's, it's, a, bit, it's a bit chilly here in Minnesota, but we can handle yeah, it. Man, it. It's chilly here in Nebraska too. I wish my kids would go back to school, but it seems like mother nature wants to keep them home forever, <laughs> which is lovely, but noisy to say the yeah. least. Well, let's jump in. We got to start talking about robotics and automation. It feels like this has been the year for a long time, but maybe this could be the year. Got to jump in right away. AI, everything with AI receives investors the money this year. What's your take on AI? Where are we at right now? Are we overvalued? Are we valued correctly, undervalued? What are your thoughts on AI? Uh, I mean, that's a pretty broad space. I mean, if we're talking about... Uh, semiconductors or NVIDIA, um, you know, they're, they've beat expectations a couple times last year and uh, they're gonna continue to grow. Um, we don't currently hold NVIDIA in the fund, um, but it is held in almost every ETF and fund and person's account across the board. And, you know, it just, it makes it a little bit scary if uh, you know if there's a disappointment or a significant pullback, uh, and video goes down. That's going to take down everybody that's holding it. Um, it's it's very very, I believe, overbought or overheld right now. Um, so, and, but if there was a significant drop down or pullback, I, mean, I might be interested in adding it to the portfolio. But uh, you know, time will tell when that um, when that occurs. Now, for the other. AI companies, um, the smaller ones. I mean, investors have been jumping on anything AI related. If, if there's AI in the name, they're buying it uh, in portfolios. But those, a lot of those companies are, first of all, they're very small, but they're going to need time to grow and develop out. Um, so, you know, I like right now kind of the hardware space, hardware side of this. Um, everyone has to update their hardware, their servers, their databases to be able to handle. Um, all of this AI as well. So there's a growth in this entire process. And so we don't want to skip over, um, you know, the hardware part of this and obviously the semiconductors and then looking even going towards the semiconductor manufacturers or engineers or designers, companies like Synapsys, who you know, announced yesterday they were going to be buying a company called Ansys to become you know, one of the largest uh, engineering and design companies for semiconductors um, so I like plays like that. Um, that's a, you know, that's one that we've held for quite some time. And, um, so, I mean, I think, I just think that the investor sentiment has sped up so much that you need to slow down a little bit. And if you actually want to make money in the space, start at the beginning, we're at the beginning right now. Yeah. Hardware overall, it looks like an interesting place to go. Well, let's just talk about that a little bit in terms of global flows, in terms of where we see assets moving. It seems like Japan has hit a little bit of a soft spot. South Korea, a little bit of a hot spot right now. Israel as well. Where are the global flows going? Why? Sh what should we be weary of, and what should we be excited about in terms of country-specific allocations or sectors? Well, as far as Japan's, because Japan's always been the largest uh, producer of industrial robots, and China had always been had the highest demand overall throughout the entire world. The U.S. and Europe just surpassed um, China's demand for the first time ever. And that is um, kind of facilitating the lack of demand in China. Um, most of the flows this year are going to, that are going to go to China, they're gonna be using for their electronic vehicle manufacturing mm -hmm. processes. And that was slow last year, but they're beginning to ramp up. So once they, begin wrapping up these purchases of the robotics equipment, um, we're gonna see this uh, dramatic rebound in the prices of these robotics companies. Now, um, we're seeing a lot better performance in robotics companies in South Korea. Uh, their technology has advanced incredibly over the past five years. Um, companies uh, such as Doosan Robotics, uh, they IPO'd back in early October. Um, they're one of the largest robotics manufacturers in the world, but also one of the most diversified. They do everything from industrial robots all the way to food and beverage systems, having 
kind of uh, AI driven robots uh, with rubber skin that look like a bartender that you can talk to and, and ask, you know, what, what would you like? Um, and they'll serve it to you. They also have um, coffee, uh, automated coffee robots for say Starbucks, one of the largest coffee companies anywhere. How much money would they, could they save by using those, um, those robots? Um, they also sell um, automatic recycling picking robotics robots that can actually, with AI, they can scan the products so they know exactly what they are and pick and sort through the whole line, work all day long on, uh, on handling all the recycling materials so you don't need to have uh, anybody basically in the operation at all. So Deucent's a great one. I mean, it was up over 168% in Q4, and um, yeah, so I think that's a really good one to watch, as well as Rainbow Robotics in South Korea. That's another one that Samsung has its eyes on um, to acquire. I think that could potentially happen this year. So yeah, South, South Korea is really, really stepping up to the game and uh, stepping up to uh, Japan. Yeah, well, let's talk a little bit about that IPO. What did you think of the economics behind the IPO? Fair value, a little aggressive in the launch. You said it's been up about 160% in Q4, but what were the dynamics of the IPO in terms of like an investor and what we should think about going forward about the price of that stock? Yeah, well, so it was, I mean, the, the IPO price was modest. I mean, the, this company has been out since 2015. It's been on my radar as a private company ever since then. They've, I mean, they've already, you know, they're making revenues um, and, they're making millions and millions of dollars already and have been for years. So I think the IPO was priced appropriately, but that being said, now where it is, you know, 160% in, you know, in three months, uh, I wouldn't enter here. Um, I think it's going to pull back. I think there'll be a correction. It's, it's just uh, everybody kind of jumped on board all at the same time. I mean, I got in early, which, which was great. So I like that return, but, I wouldn't add to that position right now, or if I, if I was a new investor, I don't, I don't think that I would add it to the portfolio right here. Okay. So wait, wait for a pullback. Wait for a pullback. I like that. Well, you know, speaking of sector specific, Doosan seems to do just about everything, but I know I've heard you talk about one of the subsectors that you really like is warehouse automation. And one of the companies on your screen has been Symbotic and their smart, smart warehouse systems. I mean, the stock price went from the 20s to the 40s last year, so a double in price in an odd year. What's your thoughts on them as a company, and then what's your kind of forecast or price target uh, for the year? Sure. Well, before, uh, I mean, there, there are a handful of companies around the world that participated in the smart warehouse. Um, There's Cardex out of Switzerland and Lifuko out of Japan. Um, but those are what I'm going to call the traditional smart warehouse, if you will. And then Symbotics come along and they've added AI to the smart warehouse. So it's a whole revolution, a whole new um, smart warehouse 2.0, if you will. And their systems, uh, Symbotic systems, I mean, they just, they can't be beat by any of these other, uh, you know, previous technology with smart warehouse companies. I mean, they've already got, you know, they've got, Walmart and um, a, a number, a number of other large companies in the U.S. that they're already doing the smart warehouses for. So they're taking they're taking the market um, by far, and they're getting new contracts with these large blue chip companies nonstop. So with the, I mean, and just with the demand in general over the past three years, with you know labor costs increasing. Uh, and costs in general increasing, and high turnover rates for employees in the warehouse area. I mean, employees, warehouse employees, their wages have been up, are up 25% in the past three years. And they have a huge, a huge turnover rate. Uh, so that's another reason that a lot of these companies are adopting um, this and Symbotics AI-driven smart warehouse. I mean, it really uh, takes care of that problem with the increased costs in labor. Um, so yeah, so since uh, I think we purchased it somewhere in the $20 range, uh, it's trading over $40 now. Um, and it had it had gone all the way up over $50 um, for a brief period. Mm -hmm. So I 
would I can estimate. I have a feeling that this could see ninety dollars by the end of twenty twenty four. Uh, so, so if anyone's at all interested in the technology of smart warehousing, because it's going to be huge and it's going to be talked about a lot over 2024, that would be the company to choose. Yeah. Well, let's, let's end on a, the note that everybody asks about rates, right? Like the Fed has made some comments. We finally digested their minutes after the December kind of euphoria. It seems to have worn off a little bit. You know, give us some perspective. What if rates stay the same? What if rates go down and then what if they go up? Do you have any broad based predictions about how that will impact uh, the market in general and investors? Well, if rates remain the same, um, then they, they don't do all these cuts. I mean, I, I think there's too many cuts priced into 2024 right now. Mm -hmm. um, it'd be great if they were able to do that, but um, dropping rates that quickly can be just as devastating as increasing them as quickly mm -hmm. as they did. Um, it can, there can be signs of fear. So um, obviously if they increased and the market does not have that price then we could see some choppy times. Um, but, you know, the second half of 24, um, I'm very confident and definitely um, it's just, we have to see what's going to happen over the next few months here. Um, so, yeah, I mean, if the rates drop steadily, that's going to be great. Um, it's going to be great for a lot of the small cap companies that have been beaten up so badly. Um, the companies that are more reliant on borrowing. Um, so I think we'll see, you know, a very large um, surge in the prices of all those small and micro cap companies because they've been so depressed ever since the Fed started increasing rates to begin with. So that's right. going to be the first thing that we see happen uh, and really you know, kind of overpower these, you know, these love magnificent seven gigantic names out there that have been, you know, overbought and no one's been buying small cap companies with not, not knowing where rates are going to go. And right. um, so I think that's really what we're going to see move the most. And I think there's going to be uh, incredible outperformance in small caps this year, which is good because um, quite a few of our robotics holdings are actually small and mid cap companies. So it should do um, bode very well for the robotics investment. Gotcha. Well, it sounds like first half of the year, keep your eye on it, maybe dibble dabble a little and have to help set the tone for a good second half. Well, that'd be pretty, pretty exciting. I'd love to see a little bit of small cap momentum just to diversify portfolios and get us off the reliance on seven stocks to drive the <laughs> stock market. Right. That's not, that's not healthy no. uh, by any means. No. Well, this has been great, Brian. Thanks as always for jump, jumping on and giving us some good perspective. It's a tough market to stay on top of because there's lots of foreign companies, lots of small companies, but you've given us a few to look forward to. We'll probably check back in in another month to see how things are going as we get ready for that great second half uh, like you spoke about. So thanks for joining us today. Thanks for having me. Stay warm. Don't forget your booties. And uh, no, <laughs> we'll talk to you guys later. Thanks Bye. so much for your time, Brian. Yep. Bye.